Are you ready to get serious for a second? Hold on, let me play a sound bite from Chicago Med. Here we go. Leaving that stairwell was the hardest thing I ever had to do. But it was what I needed to do to save my life. Do you understand? So if I'm there with you the whole time during the surgery, will you take that chance too? It's really my only chance. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. If you don't let me do surgery, you're going to die, kid. Very serious. <laughs> he plays Dr. Dean Archer in the NBC hit Chicago Med. It is Steven Weber. How are you, sir? I'm well. That was the famous scene where I was trying to convince somebody to uh, to have her son circumcised. <laughs> Wait a second. No, it was a girl that needed to have surgery. That he was 28 <laughs> years old, and that's why it was so, so difficult. 28. <laughs> You know, I'm watching that scene on Chicago Med and you're actually crying. How could you make yourself cry? I always wondered about that with actors and actresses. It's called eye drops, Pete. No, it's not. (gasps) It's not called eye drops, Pete. (laughs) Unless I can't, you know, get it all going. (laughs) It's called Um, acting, Lisa. That's what it is. uh, uh, I I would say that, uh, well, first of all, look, I, I... I went to theater school and I studied acting and no eye drops required. No but but what, look, pocket. once in a while, once in a while, if you know, if you're doing something that requires like a whole day of screaming, crying, yeah, you yeah. need some help because whatever needs to be done. But I like to generate my own tears. I always say that at this point in my life, I'm always four seconds away from a hysterical breakdown. So. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be this show. That's why you're on this show right here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> How about a bedroom scene? You ever do a bedroom scene with a woman and you had to sit hey. there for like hours on end? I mean, crying? Yeah. Well, <laughs> not, that's, that's something I take from life. A lot of crying when I, when I make love. Uh, not crying. You're doing the bedroom scene and you're kissing and there's people around. Thankfully, I don't do those scenes anymore. But there was a time in my life when that was, uh, I was, you know, I did them with fair frequency. And uh, people forget, and even I forget when I watch films and TV, that it's all make-believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. so it's all an approximation of life it's not real so that's so hard. funny that Pete got on this topic because I was thinking today I was like oh I'm going to talk to Stephen what am I going to say and I was like gosh is it so hard to be a sex symbol for this long I have not encountered that that what? flattering <laughs> yeah all right down down girl <laughs> this is uh, a lie no, I'm, I'm, no well please believe it no in fact I mean I work on this show Chicago Med and there there are hunks wall to wall and I am you know I look like a sack of laundry with hair on that <laughs> and, on. You know, I'm, I don't think I'm hideous but uh, you know that doesn't happen and I mean when I was younger maybe it was tossed around but, but believe me it's <laughs> just be a silver fox and lean silver into fox. it oh, yeah, i'm leaning into it i'm doing the best i can you know who i've loved over the years is oliver platt i mean that guy he is just awesome what's it like working with that dude i've known oliver since the the uh mid 80s back in new york and so it's great to actually work with him what is it like he is um i would say he's a kind of an elder statesman of actors uh he's respected he's funny he's loose he's serious he takes his work seriously but not to the point of annoyance he's um (laughs) a wonderful guy to work with and uh i mean first of all nobody is ever forced to work in this industry so it's such a right pleasure and one is so grateful to be able to work at all let alone with friends and he's a he's a good guy so he's not as intimidating as most of the characters he plays, because I feel like if I ran into him, I would be scared to open my mouth. <laughs> well, I didn't say that he's not intimidating. He's intimidating <laughs> in kind of a, a good way. Not You don't feel endangered, but he's... he's a, not physically he's endangered, but intellectually. I feel <laughs> like there's a sharp wit. There is a is. sense of gravitas and confidence yeah. when he speaks, and it kind of makes the whole room shut up and pay attention. I tell you, when he walks into a room, uh, people do shut up and pay attention because he's, as you say, I mean, he's got gravitas and but also he's got great humor. He's got humility, but he's a big dude, too. I mean, he's he's a big uh, boy. Yeah, he's a big boy. And so when we play these scenes, it's wonderful. He's he's got a very um, he has an embrace in 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 
Yeah, he, yeah, he kind of embraces you, uh, not physically because he doesn't like to be touched. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sure not. It's a pandemic. It's a pandemic. We're done. We beat yeah. it. It's okay. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. Yay. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> We're talking with uh, Stephen Weber. He plays Dr. Dean Archer in the NBC hit Chicago Med. I want to ask you something before we move on from um, Oliver Platt. I'm a huge fan of television. And I want to say about 15 years ago, you've known him since the 80s. 15 years ago, he did a series on Showtime called Huff with Hank Azaria. Hank Hank Azaria. Azaria, uh, He was so good. Hank played a psychiatrist, but Oliver Platt stole every episode. Wow. He, and that's when I found out I love this guy. I didn't know who he was at the time, and I've followed him ever since. He's so good. There's a whole kind of cadre of actors, men and women, who I guess aren't necessarily considered to be leading actors. And they are character actors. And I always admired character actors. And for that variability that you just cited in Oliver, they they don't have to worry about being square-jawed and handsome or beautiful. Mm-hmm. Instead, they can focus on these nuances and characteristics that, if not more realistic, are at least more entertaining and can enrich a, um, a scene from the normal or banal and make it really intense. And yeah, and occasionally steal roles in the best sense. He can steal a role by doing nothing. I mean, he's great looking and he's he just exudes intelligence and he really listens when you're in a scene. And that's kind of the... That's always been elusive to me um, when I act. And the key to acting is listening. And all the great mm-hmm. actors oh that my we love gosh. are able to just listen and react. And it sounds easy. It is murder, man. Yeah. But he can do it. He is, really can do it. Isn't that true in life, though? If you go to a cocktail party, we say that about radio all the time. Uh, you know, there's so much bad radio out there because people just don't listen. They don't have a conversation. Or if you go... Again, to a cocktail party, people aren't listening. They suddenly, I don't know where they are. They're not listening. Uh, they're in you, their head uh, thinking about what they're going to say next. Yeah. Pete, could you repeat that, please? I was zoning out. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? Punk. See what I did? Uh, I do. <laughs> Lisa's all over me this attire. She loves I'm me. Sorry. She hates me. No, but I, I can just... see what I can see your appeal. You're very sort of, you like to. <laughs> You like to, you know, kind of entice and then mm-hmm. get I like it. to call it being sassy, you know. Sassy. Um, call it sassy. That, that is really why cool. she's on this show. And I, I do like to look back at old TV shows. You did a show years ago called Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. Sarah mm-hmm. Paulson was in this. That's when I fell in love with Sarah Paulson, who is unbelievable nowadays. It took she, you that long to fall in love with her? Well, Where were you? what was that, 15 years ago, Stephen? You did this show? Uh, but yeah. she... And my point uh. is, you, it was canceled. <laughs> it was canceled after one season. It was about an <laughs> SNL, Saturday Night Live type show. You'd put the show together, and then the episode would end right before it would air. It was a big... First of all, it was a very big show, highly anticipated, Aaron Sorkin. Tommy Schlamy, who had both, uh, you know, stewarded the West Wing to its enormous success. They had, uh, the show had um, Matthew Perry, Brad Whitford, uh-huh. Sarah Paulson, uh, Amanda Peet, uh, uh, Timothy Busfield. I mean, they had, uh, they had everybody in front of the camera and also a, an amazing team of writers and crew people and art directors and directors behind the scene. So it was highly anticipated, and my theory for its short duration is that um, the critics, there were a couple things. One is the critics kind of had their knives out for Aaron. I think he'd had such amazing success that for some reason they wanted to, they wanted to clean their claws on him, and they kind of did. Um, I think that was one reason. Another reason was that it was an incredibly expensive show to produce yeah. week to week. Right. Um, every, it's all expense, and... And I, yeah. I contend that if we had had a second uh, season, we would have gotten a lot of the bugs out. You know, it's hard to do a show about an SNL-like show and keep referring to how funny and hilarious and great it is without having actual SNL performers and people writing right. that write that material. So instead we had series writers writing crazy sketch comedy. I'm not sure it was a perfect match. But man, there was some amazing stuff on that show, and I was so happy to be part of it. I really, oh, I mean, it was really the best time I had on a TV show, and that's saying a lot because I have wow. lots of good experiences. Yeah. Do people still come up to you and say, "Oh, you're that guy from Wings"? That's oh, when we all course. fell in love with you. Of course they do. 
I'm happy about that. That's fine. God, that was, I love that show. How much fun was that doing that on NBC? That, that was crazy fun too. We were young and it was um, kind of the tail end of the golden era, or at least the most recent golden era of television. It was the nineties and you had shows like Cheers and ER and Friends and who I don't know, Seinfeld. Seinfeld just ended. So, yeah. You know, and, and so, and, and shoehorned in there as part of the NBC family was the, um, wings uh, we were we were liked and loved but we, we were never an edgy show or particularly sexy or or or, or uh, we never generated headlines or magazine covers but we always hung in there we had a very kind of steady flow of accessible and and absolutely good comedy and wonderful performances so we managed to last almost eight seasons which was uh, for wow. them pretty pretty cool but it was a great time yeah nbc was a good place to be must see TV. Were you part of Must See TV Thursday night? We were. Uh, well, we you know, were all over the place. <laughs> you know, we were part of Must See TV until we weren't, and then we were put back in. And we were very much a utility <laughs> show. I think we were. We were always there while many shows came and went. And um, and while some people might say, "Damn, you know, we kind of missed being big stars and everything." No, no, no. We we were we were there. We had we had steady work. For right. a yeah. long time, and a lot of people appreciated it. And the writing was great. Look, uh, the, the writers uh, from Frasier came from that show. The writers from Modern Family came so from that So smart. It's a yeah. great show. You, Tim and Daly, it's... Crystal Bernard was on that show, uh, Tony <laughs> Shalhoub, Thomas Hayden <laughs> Church, who went on to do Sideways, the wine movie, which right. is just such a great movie. Yeah, the wine movie. Yeah, yeah. The, wine the wine movie. movie. <laughs> Yeah, good. David Schramm and Rebecca Schull, and we had we had a blast. We had a really good time. Yeah. Amy Yazbek. Uh, Isn't who, it more fun to be the kind of meat and potatoes show that everyone is comforted by, and not have to be under the scrutiny of a juggernaut like Friends, where those none of those actors could you know have a life. You're, it you're, was so famous. You know, it was too much. Wrong. You are not wrong. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, I have this discussion from time to time with people about. The components that make up a, a fame, let's say, um, it is a real drug, and it is a uh, it can be problematic. And if you get a lot of it, yeah, it seems like it's a great life, but it's anything but. And um, it's like being given all these narcotics <laughs> and all this kind of instant affirmation. And if you cannot handle that, if you don't put it in a proper context, it can mess you up. But we had steady work and we made some good money and right. good friendships, so it was pretty good. Good for you. Stephen, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to have you hold on a second. Make sure you check out Stephen Weber as Dr. Dean Archer in the NBC hit Chicago Med. More with Stephen Weber on the way. More of the Pete McMurray Show next. Hey. I don't need another lecture right now. I know you think I'm being stupid. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Sometimes... Being scared is just about the smartest thing a person can be. Now back to the Pete McMurray Show. You fell in love with Steven Weber on the NBC hit Wings. He currently stars as Dr. Dean Archer in the NBC hit Chicago Med. Steven, you have Chicago Med, you have Chicago Fire, Chicago PD. Does Dick Wolf call you up and say, Steven, we're ready for you? It's like the Godfather calling. Is that how it works? At this point, I don't think Dick Wolf know that I'm on the planet. I think at this point, you know, he's managed to create a world that is probably self-perpetuating. Um, he, he does, I'm sure he does weigh in. I've never met him, um, but he's managed to create these worlds, you know, with not only the, the one uh, Chicago, but also uh, the law and order world. These are, as you say, juggernauts. And the reason is because they're brilliantly written and they have a great, recipe and structure that people clearly love, not just Americans. I mean, it's all over the world. So I'm happy to be part of this show. I, I got a call. Yeah, I didn't have to audition, but I mean, I, I still do audition and like to, but this was an offer and I, I took it. You like to audition? Are you a yeah. sadist? Uh, we'll talk when we get home. Okay, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, am I a sadist? No, I'm not. But I realize that um, a lot of jobs are won or lost actually in the room. Um, yeah. The thing is that people, uh, actors, I think mistakenly learn that they have to be terrified at an audition and auditions are hard. But the, the process of kind of weeding through performers in order to get the quote unquote best one for the job is inherently unfair. But 
That's the nature of it. You could say that football, baseball, or hockey are unfair because there's competition. Well, there's competition here too. And so I had to make friends with the idea of auditioning. My brother, uh, Dave Mick, is in medical sales, and he sits in to um, surgeries, and every once in a while, he'll think in his mind that he's a doctor. He'll say, well, you know why you're sick, and he'll give me some advice, and I'm like, hold on, cowboy. <laughs> you're a salesman. You play, Stephen, you play a doctor on television. Right. Do you sometimes hit that mode, or your family members call you up and say, Stephen, you know, I'm having this thing. Can you help me with it? Um, I've removed a few... Objects from tumors. Bodies, the tumors, <laughs> livers. I took an eye out. Uh, Wait a second. I, Hold on. I to, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I mean, you know, for a few minutes in the beginning uh, where they had me doing some really kind of bizarre surgeries. That, uh, and, and, and unlike other the other actors who were on the show from the beginning, they actually did do the equivalent of a, of a, a drive around with police. You know, they, they visited uh, hospitals and they... Um, I have not done that. I think at this point, I really don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> I just, I tell, I, they tell me where to stand. I'm they good. Me, I got my lines. I, I can fake it. Yeah. Pull your hand in here, pull out this bloody thing. But it's not that hard. I can cry on demand if you need me to cry. I will on cry demand. for you. I can cry. I can remove things. I'm your man. Uh, yes. How many Stephen King projects have you done? Uh, one, two, three, four, I, I want to say upwards of four or five. And that includes, um, uh, the audiobook it that I narrated, which I'm very proud of, uh, which is out there, which is 1200 pages long. And wow. Wow. How long did so that take? It took a couple of weeks of reading six hours a day. And so I want to know how many glasses of water that took. You're interested in the time. I want to know two gallons, <laughs> two gallons, gallons a day. Glasses of water. Right. How about Are you a liter person or a gallon person? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in the States, so you know gallons. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, okay. I'll break it down. <laughs> it's, uh, I would say it's, um, I would say it's, Several gallons, you know, but a lot yeah, of that, right? that is tea. Are you talking about pure water gallons or are you talking about tea gallons? <laughs> oh, man. The, the you, actual you, tea juice. I, I, I know my business. I think you have hit levels of fame that maybe you didn't think you had. Uh, you're scaring me now. Uh, you <laughs> scared me a little earlier, but now I'm mm -hmm. convinced that you're, you're trouble. I am. Uh, my mother loves all of these Chicago shows, med, water reclamation, police, law, <laughs> all, all of the above. Parking meters. She's, she was so excited that we That'd were going job. to. Yeah, she was, she was so excited that we were going to speak to you. And she said, look, I really love him as an actor. He's great, but he's the doctor that I love to hate. Mm. And I said, well, can I throw that out there? She goes, oh, please don't. <laughs> keeping, in mind, keeping in mind, Stephen, she lives in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And she loves all of the Chicago shows. But, uh, you know, that just really speaks to the uh, the versatility of, you know, your talent. Uh, you, you can you can turn it off. You can turn it on. You're you're funny. You're not. You're you're hateful. We love you. We don't. Uh, it's just great. I love watching you. Well, it also speaks to your your ability to throw your mother under the bus uh, <laughs> for your own career. I begged you not to bring that up, and yet you did. I told her I would, Stephen. I told her I would do this. I mean, the funny thing is that, yeah, while I know he's a bit of a uh, – he's also very talented, <laughs> and uh, he's a great surgeon. He's very well respected. And the thing is that when I've spoken to medical professionals and we have tech advisors on the show, they will invariably take me aside and say, my character is closest to – Many doctors there uh, are, yeah, and yeah. they're not all square-jawed, beautiful altruists. Uh, they are frequently overworked. They have PTSD. They're grouchy, and they can be unpleasant. And so, <laughs> I think I, I'm a good character to have around to kind of, you know, nailed it. Contrast. That's real life. Yeah, that's real life. Oh, it, thank you. It really is. Uh, Stephen, you're delightful. I mean, uh, I, I hey, wanted you to be fun really and are. happy, and here it is. You nailed it for us, man. You really did. I'm a sex symbol. I'm uh, <laughs> affable. Uh -huh. I'm versatile. I'm yep. all these things. Leaning into the silver fox. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have real tears. I'll take fake tears. <laughs> I do it all. He'll take anything. Take Check anything. out Chicago Med on NBC. It is Stephen Weber. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. You're the nice. bomb.com. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> More of the Pete McMurray Show next.